Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about storage oscilloscope. So, storage oscilloscope is nothing but it is used to store whatever the data, whatever the signal that is ERO is going to be displayed. Suppose I am displaying a sinusoidal signal like this. I am displaying a sinusoidal signal which is having 5 volts in the positive side and minus 5 volts in the negative side. With, an ample, uh, with a time period of 1 millisecond. Okay. Now, at this moment, when I am displaying the CR, when I am displaying this type of signal on the CRO screen, of course, when the input is there, the CRO screen displays. That is okay. Normal oscilloscope can do that thing. But if we want to display the same signal even when there is no input, that is the task here. Okay, so normal CROs or normal oscilloscope cannot display when there is no input. Okay, whenever there is an input which is connected from any probe to the CRO, then it displays whatever the signal is there, then it displays accordingly. But storage oscilloscope is used to display the signal when it is connected and if even after disconnecting also, it stores the data and displays whenever we need but it will not done repeatedly only up to specific interval of time like one day or two days only the data will be stored and uh, later it will be go away okay so storage oscilloscope is used to store the signal that has been displayed previously that is the main purpose it is used to store the signal okay not the data it is an analog storage oscilloscope why, why because we have digital storage oscilloscopes also available it is an analog storage oscilloscope the data whatever we are displaying the same data has been stored now let us see the block diagram of this storage oscilloscope <coughs> see this is the writing and normally we know how the crt screen how cro we have explained like a horizontal reflection system vertical reflection system is everything is common here Okay, except that some it is having additional features like along with the original whatever the conventional CRO has along with that additional features we have. I will explain what are the writing gun which is nothing but electron gun. Okay, writing gun or electron gun which is energized when we switch on it. That means when 230 volts are applied to this is CRO 6.3 volts 230 volts will be stepped down to 6.3 volts and the electron gun will be energized and these are sets of a set of a vertical reflection plate and a set of horizontal reflection plates however the systems which are connected to this vertical reflection system and for this horizontal reflection system are there here our purpose is to uh, how to store the data and uh, how to retrieve the data when there is no input Okay, so for that purpose, here vertical reflection system and horizontal reflection systems are eliminated, but actually they are there in the circuit, but our purpose is not to explain so, uh, <coughs> those systems. <coughs> our purpose is to explain how the signal is going to be stored. Okay, now see here, these are two flat guns. This is one flat gun. This is another flat gun. Flat guns are used to produce the electron beam, produce the electron beam in the absence of input signal, okay. And this is collimator electrode. This is collimator electrode which is placed on either sides of this CRT screen. This is also collimator electrode. See, collector mesh. This one is collector mesh and this is storage mesh. And this is the pass for screen. Normally, what we have in the general or conventional CROs, this is pass for screen. See, additionally, what are the equipments we are using? Flat gun. And next, collimator. Collector mesh. Collector mesh. And storage mesh. storage mesh so except these four remaining everything is common what we have in the conventional here also we have used the same method okay generally there are two types of methods that a signal can be stored one is mesh storage mesh storage 
another one is phosphor storage phosphor storage there are a signal can be stored in two ways one is message storage second one is phosphor storage i think you know already what is a phosphor storage because we have already discussed in the conventional uh, cro's what do you mean by a phosphor in the crt features i explained what is the phosphor refers to <coughs> a fluorescent material that has been coated on the crvo screen backside the screen backside which is nothing but a phosphor what is the purpose of taking the phosphor phosphor determines color phosphor determines color and time that it elapses on the crvo screen even when the switch when the power is switched off it uh, takes some time to disappear the signal that is what the phosphor indication okay so phosphor is nothing but it takes some time to disappear the signal so phosphor is the material that even besides the time lapses the signal on the crvo screen okay so they, that is nothing but phosphor storage phosphor storage and now we are going to uh, we are going to explain here i'm going to explain mesh storage mesh storage so how the mesh storage is acting and uh, what are the use of these uh, flat guns and everything i will explain here okay now in the conventional method that means when the input signal is here when a vertical reflection system is applied with a sinusoidal signal okay then writing gun is in on state and a beam of electrons are produced and everything is under working a vertical reflection system horizontal reflection system everything are working now the electron beam is displaying on the screen when these electrons are transmitting see here we are using a storage mesh which is connected which is placed in between the horizontal reflection and vertical uh, that means deflection plates and this phosphor screen i repeat the storage mesh is placed between the plates and the phosphor see this is i am talking about this one okay so what happens is the storage mesh is nothing but it is a dielectric material storage mesh is nothing but a dielectric material okay when this beam touches this storage mesh see i am saying how it is going to be done this is the storage mesh let us consider this is the storage mesh storage mesh which is placed after the plates before the phosphor screen suppose i am displaying this sinusoidal signal okay the writing gun writing gun takes the electron path from here and goes like this and goes like this until it reaches the sweep complete sweep like this okay what i told you storage mesh is nothing but a dielectric material when this electron uh, speed electron touches this dielectric material it it uh, ha it will be charged positively the region where it touches the region where it touches the electro the region where the electron beam touches the storage mesh that will be positively charged because it is a dielectric material <coughs> that will be positively charged of course the beam will be going through this positively charged area and uh, touches the phosphor screen normally it works in the conventional way okay hope you understand except the normal conventional operation just we are inserting one storage mesh which is a dielectric material made up of dielectric material when it when the electron beam touches this and passing through this storage mesh it creates some positive charged area through the same shape what the wave has okay this is the initial position of the storage mesh when the signals are acting when the signal is there now disconnect the signal disconnect the signal that means when there is in the absence of signal also our storage oscilloscope should display the same waveform what it has already been shown when the signal is there okay now let us see what happens so how the mesh storage works when in the absence of signal okay so in the in the absence of input signal 
this process will run. So in the absence of input signal, what is what we are not doing? We are not using the writing gun. We are not using vertical reflection plates and horizontal reflection plates. We are not using them. And now just we are switching on the flat guns. We are switching on the flat guns. Flat guns are nothing but what they are doing. A beam of lot of electrons are just producing because of the flat guns and transmits through this collector mesh and storage mesh. See what happens. What is the purpose of collimator here? Collimator is used to direct the electrons such that they completely fall on this storage mesh. Suppose if collimator is not there, the electron has a possibility to go in this way. And again here also there is a possibility to go the electron in this way. <coughs> so what is the purpose of collimator now? Collimator will direct the electron even it touches this one and it directs this towards this one. Okay, even here also it touches this one, it directs the electron towards this one, such that all the electrons which are produced by this flat gun, all are focusing towards only the screen. Okay, now what happens? All these electrons passes through this collector mesh and touches this storage mesh. Already in the storage mesh, it is already positively charged, it is having already a positively charged area like this. <coughs> This is a positive charged area. Now, in this positive charged area, electrons which are put, which are coming from this flat gun are of negative charge, and it is positive charge. This uh, positive charge is attracting the negative energy, negative electron, and goes through this path. Okay, hope you understand. We are having a sinusoidal signal shape like this, which is a positive charged area. Now, in this area only, in this particular shape only, the electrons has the feasibility to go to the other end. That means, <coughs> let it be, this is the shape here. So, the electrons are transmitting through this storage mesh in the same area, in the same shape, so that the electrons will be transmitted through this storage mesh and reaches the phosphor. We know already what happens when the passport touches the electron, it simply displays the same signal. Okay, here everything is happened because of storage mesh. Storage mesh has the positive charged area. Whenever the electron touches the positive charged area, simply it attracts that positive charge and again transmits the signal back to the signal to, towards the password screen. So, password screen when the electron touches, it shows some light so that the signal is going to be displayed. Okay, and we have a doubt what is the purpose of collector mesh. Suppose if any electron, what about the remaining areas? What about the remaining area? Suppose if electron touches this particular area, those electrons are going and passing through the particular shape. What about the electron touches at this particular remaining areas? In the remaining portions where the electron touches, they are reflected back. They are reflecting back. So, such reflected electrons are going to be collected by this collector mesh. Okay, in the positive charged area only, the electron has a feasibility to penetrate through that. Okay, where in the remaining area, the electron has no chance to go so that it is coming back, reflected back. Such reflected electrons which is going like this, it will be reflected back. That Such reflected electrons is collected by the collector mesh. Okay, so this is what how the operation of uh, mesh storage works. Normally, uh, uh, password storage is nothing but now in the conventional method what we are using, that is nothing but your password storage. Okay, so this is what the storage mesh, storage oscilloscope operation, how it is working with the help of storage mesh. Okay, uh, some description is also been added in the next slide like this. Okay, you can go through that points. Thank you.